Maxima. This is MR, your host. Welcome. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching this. If you are watching on YouTube right now, I hope all is well with you guys. And today is a very nice episode because let me introduce to you our guest for today's episode. She's an activist, a writer, and also a plus size model. Here to discuss her passion and advocacy for bo body positivity and gender equality, Mandaluyong represent. Please welcome Miss Maddie Cruz. Hi, Maddie. Hi. Thank you so much for having me in your podcast. It means a lot. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. How are you? How's the? How are you this quarantine season? Um. Honestly, I am just super lucky. Na instead of me, I mean, I'm still worrying about a lot of things for sure. But I'm just thankful na I've had more time on my hands. So all the things that you know I've been giving out the excuses na oh I can't do it because I don't have time. Nagagawa ko na siya now. So yon. I'm just really thankful for that. Hopefully, a lot more people their situations get better and get they get to do the same thing. So you said na marami kang inasikaso and you were able to do a lot of things. Can you share with us what are those things? Um yeah. Well, for one, um, in terms of my physical health. Kasi syempre, during, ano, during the old normal, I was a working student, I was in the student council, I would go to class and I would go to work and sometimes I would go to shoots, etc., etc., etc. So, you know, parang I didn't really have that much time on my hands left to work out or to take extra, to pay extra mind to what I'm eating, etc. So, right now, because, you know, kahit marami akong ginagawa, nasa bahay lang naman ako, hindi na ubus yung oras ko sa commute or in public transport. True, true. Um, I found more time work to work out. So the last two months, I've been working working out consistently every day. And then, yeah, like, diba, I told you when we were chatting one time, I've also decided to switch to veganism. So it's been working wonders for me. So yun. Yeah, so those are just some of the things. Offhand, I've also been like coming up with all these ideas. I've been working with new clients. So yon, and I've been writing more. Because, di ba, I'm a writer. But then, ironically, it wasn't my full-time job prior to the old normal. So now, I get to write more. So yon, those are just a few of the things. Someone's been busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, since you already started, why don't you tell our listeners or our viewers more about yourself and what do you exactly do? Yeah. Okay, sure. Um, so yeah, in case you missed that out, my name is Maddie Cruz. Um, just like she said, I am um, an activist, a writer, a plus size model, a student leader. Well, just to give you more info on that, I am currently um, in my third year. I'm almost done with my degree. I'm taking up foreign, foreign service major in diplomacy from the Lyceum of the Philippines University, where I also serve as my college's representative in the central student government. So my role in the central student government is the auditor. And then aside from that, uh, I'm working for a startup. Um, we're focusing on sustainable fashion. And aside from that, I also write for Candy Magazine, a lot of other publications. So, yeah, that's about it. And when I have the time, I pursue um, advocacy work. So, you know, volunteer work. Um, yeah, that's about it. So, I asked you before we started with this interview, what, what are the two passionate things that you wanted to talk about? And that is exactly body positivity and gender equality. Yes. So, yes. can you... Tell us, how did you decide to go into this kind of venture? Okay, so honestly, uh, growing up, I wasn't always like this. Like, I think if you're watching the video now, you would think, oh, shocks and daldal niya, dami niyang alam. Para alam na alam niya ginagawa niya in life. Pero honestly, I wasn't like this growing up. And it's such a surprise to me when people tell me that they've been intimidated by me or they've always thought I was like really strong and stuff like that. Because in my head, I wasn't like that. Like I had a completely different image of what I was as a person in my head. So going, going into that narrative, parang growing up, I wasn't like this. Parang, I guess, matigas talaga yung ulo ko. Bata pa lang ako. And alam mo yun, parang... 
parang ano lang talaga ako, mukha pa lang talaga yung mukha ko. Or parang, I just do whatever it is that I want to do. Pero, I wasn't as confident. And I, there was always this doubt. And that came from knowing that I was always at least one size bigger than my classmates. Kasi di ba, like, for example, um, I couldn't go skating with my friends kasi yung mga nagtuturo ng skating, masyado na wakong mabigat. And di ba, imagine, like, an instructor telling you at four years old that, oh, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't want to teach you how to skate because you're too heavy. Wow. And I, I wanted to get into ballet, but then my parents, I mean, we've had their fair share of misunderstandings, but I also understand them. My parents weren't very supportive of me going into ballet, even if I, at one point, I wanted to. Kasi feeling nila pa, I was just gonna be made fun of. Kasi diba, like, just imagine a fat kid wearing that ballet, ballet whatever you, what, whatever that's called. <laughs> diba? Kasi nga, parang feeling nila pagtatawanan lang ako if people mm-hmm. see me wearing that. So then, they didn't, ano, they didn't, support of me wanting to somehow go down that road. Stuff like that. So, you know, parang, to me, it always felt like I was at a disadvantage just because I was fat. Mm. Especially during my formative years. I mean, grade school was okay, but high school was really super hard. I'd imagine. And, like, I've had on and off bouts of bulimia. Like, I, you know, like during my breaks in school, I would get, I would have a Sorry, medyo graphic. But, like, you know, I would force myself to throw up in the bathroom, you know. And, syempre, di ba, parang high school, I was in an all-girls school. I'm not blaming my, ano, ha, my, my classmates. Ha. That's, not, that's not what this is. I, I, I mean, I'm talking about the system. Or, like, you know, society in general. Not specific people. Um, syempre, all-girls school. So, dahil lahat kayo babahe, mas mabilis masingle out yung maganda. Mm-hmm. yung lapit din ng boys. Yeah. Alam mo yun, yung naagawan. Yeah. So, syempre, well, you know, when you're in an all-girls school, everyone is trying to look like the same thing. You know? Sexy, payat, blah, blah, blah. And syempre, I wasn't that. So, it was so hard. Like, it was really hard kasi, syempre, you would always get singled out and, you know, pag-interaction. Hindi ko alam if, if naranasan mo yun kasi, di ba? I did, I did. Yun, di ba? May interaction. So, no, tapos, ano, parang syempre, the cool guys, the guys na gusto ng mga girls, yung mga guys na habulin, they don't wanna be seen with a fat kid. Kasi that's not the coolest thing to see. Parang it makes them look like a loser. So, yeah. you know, parang I've had to, you know, somehow live with that up until college. And yeah, it was hard. And then, yun, parang I don't know at which point in my life I decided to change that in my head. But one day, I just did. I just embraced it for what it was. And then it brought me places, which I'm really thankful mm-hmm. for. But somewhere along the way, I realized that how we view our bodies, or that bo- whole body positivity, body image thing, it's rooted into so many different issues that's, must, that's much bigger than you know self-esteem mm-hmm. or how you view yourself. Like, mm-hmm. It's how I got involved in gender equality kasi na-realize ko um, the world wants to see women in a certain way yes that's where the body positivity issue comes in and if you think about it they think like that because they still believe that women are, are supposed to you know to adhere to what the world thinks they should be so yeah and parang it's a very intersectional issue and because of it I've you know I've learned a lot of things I've started advocating for, you know, much deeper issues. Pero, yun. Pero it starts there, eh. Kasi, until you get past your own insecurities, I think it would be very difficult for you to start fighting for the rights of someone else. So, yun. Parang, in my platform before, I would just talk about body image. Uh-huh. Now, I would talk about more hardcore things. And I think people somehow listen. I mean, I'm not the biggest influencer out there, but I do feel that somehow people listen because you know because they can relate with me they understand me i was them at one point parang ganun really beautiful um it's hard to listen uh, you went through so much tapos naiintindi ko yung part of your parents when parang siguro in their way they wanted to protect you but at the same time it also instills in you na parang magulang ko nga hindi ako ganun eh parang ibang tao pa kaya parang yeah. 
Exactly. Iba rin alam ko saan ka lulugar. And yeah. it's, I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna say that I, I know what you're going through. Like, yes, I've also been bullied at one point in my life, but not because of what I look like. So I know that's a different issue altogether, but still it's hard to hear. And I'm sorry that you had to go through that. Yeah. But, you know, um, I realized because of everything that's mm-hmm. happened to me, you know, like, like the whole, kasi nagkat, nagka-face din ako, sobrang problematic ko as a person. Like, I'll be the first to say it. Sobrang, sobrang kalat ko. Sobrang gulo ko as a person. Mm-hmm. I was, you know, I was making, you know, just continuously making a mess. And, I mean, it's a completely, completely different issue altogether. But, it started because of, that issue that I felt like I was this and I was that because I was fat but but not to romanticize suffering or whatever but because of everything that I had to go through I was also able to experience love in many more unique ways you know Parang siyempre, di ba? Like, typically, your idea would, of love would be, you know, your, your mom, your dad. Not, I'm not saying I don't get love from them, ha, pero parang your mom, your dad. Pero because nga, my circumstances were so unusual, especially mm-hmm. after I moved out at 19. Yun, I moved out at 19. So, everything after 19, you know, it's it's crazy. It was difficult. It was sometimes heartbreaking. It wanted to, it want, it made me want to give up. But I look back and I realize I witnessed love in so many unconventional ways because of what I had to go through. So now I'm at the point, I'm just ready to let go of everything, let let go of all of that and, you know, start fighting for causes which are bigger than myself. So, yun. It's really beautiful what you're saying. Um, Can you expound more on the unconventional love that you were talking about so that if ever there's someone's listening who is lost right now, baka nalulu sight lang siya, pero he or she is also experiencing that unconventional love. Can you give us an example for it to be a reminder of sorts? Um, okay, so it can be different for lots of people. Pero, like for me, for example, um, when I moved out, syempre, di ba, parang 19 ako, I didn't have a degree. I'm still finishing that degree now. So, parang siyempre, and, and I was, you know, I was studying in a very expensive school, to say mm-hmm. the least. So, just imagine, di ba, like, what people were thinking of me. I moved out, I dropped out, I wasn't living with my parents, di ba? Parang, you know, people would be expecting I'm going down, a da- I'm going on a downward spiral. Pero, yeah. one example of unconventional love that I've been receiving is, you know, finding love in my LGBT friends. You know, like, yung mga, the, the people, yung mga Becky na tinatawag kong mom or mama. Mm. You know, that's, you know, they don't, you know, parang, they're not my biological mom. But because they love me and they cared for me and they taught me so many things, it became so much easier for me to repair my relationship with my own mom. Or my friends, you know. Some of my friends, sobrang bully nila sa akin. Sobrang, alam mo yun, minsan gusto mo lang Kalbuhin. Gusto mo lang sampalin. <laughs> Pero for example, my best friend, my best friend since high school, he's a guy, but every time I would feel lonely. Siyempre, hindi kasama tong quarantine period kasi ibang usapan to eh. That's <laughs> 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 the dynamic of every single thing. Pero yun, like, prior to this, whenever I would be sad, whenever I would feel lonely, or whenever I was, you know, going through something, he would, his house his home was always open to me. Like, there was this one time I was going through something pretty bad. He let me stay at his place for one week. You know? And if that's, I mean, diba, if that's not love, I don't know what is. Like, he could have just said, no, sorry, I have a lot of my plate. Di kaya solohin right now. But he did. So, and then, and the, isa pa is, like, for example, I have this family. I call them family. Like, sometimes people, I, I would tell people, oh, uuwi kasi ako ng San Juan today. Eh. But in reality, when I say uuwi ako ng San Juan, the people I come home to in San Juan, they're not really my blood relatives, you know. But I do see them as my family. And, you know, they also, you know, they let, whenever I'm going through something, they let me stay. Ganyan. Whenever they feel like I haven't been talking or ha- I haven't been in touch for a week or so, they would, you know, take the liberty and check check up on me. So, mga ganong bagay, like, sometimes we don't see it, but 
as hard as it is to accept, you have to know that honestly, the world doesn't owe you anything. And, you know, that sounds really sad. But when you put things into perspective and you think about it and people do all of these things for you, even if they didn't have to, you know, parang it means so much more. It okay. amounts to so much more. So, yun. yun. Beautiful words. Beautiful words. Um, well, would you like to say thank you to everyone who's helped you along the way? Parang, <laughs> parang it's, a, it's a perfect opportunity. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I mean, I don't have to single out anyone. If you know, if you know it, like, you know, alam nyo naman yun. I, I, I'm a very vocal person. I'm a very vocal friend. Whether it's you letting me stay at your place or you just listening to me or even just you telling me that my work is important or, you know, you let me, you've given me a platform, you, you appreciate my work. It really means a lot. Like it's, I'm really thankful for that. So thank you. Thank you for being <laughs> here. Because we're in it. Yes. <laughs> That's good. Um, can we talk about that when you decided to be an active uh, activist for your causes and your advocacies, can you remember kung kailan yung turning point mo na parang napag-isip mo na this is the time that I should fight for what I believe in. Okay, so this is gonna be a little long but I'll try to make it as short and as comprehensive as possible. So, the I mentioned that I had a phase in my life that I was really problematic. You know, the teen angst. Diba? Yung mga, you know, yung mga yung teenage dirt bag, whatever. Mga ganun ba? Like, so, emo parang, days. <laughs> oh, parang ganun. So, I've, I've had that phase and I wouldn't go into detail, but I got in trouble. And, you know, if it was someone else and not me who got in trouble, I think they would still be carrying the consequences now. But because I was in a relatively better place, I didn't have to. You know, it's just the type of story I would tell people if I wanted to make them laugh. Or if I wanted them to, you know, na parang, oh talaga, solid yun na, ha ha ha, you know. And that's privilege talking. And then another instance would be, um, and I hope this is okay to mention, um, I was mistakenly listed in the drug list. Oh. And I can like, I can, li- I can proudly say, Anyone, if they wanted to, you know, find dirt on me, wala kayo talagang mahana. Because I've never done drugs in my life. Not even marijuana, not even, wala, as in zero. Right, right. Tapos parang, you know, parang I just got a call from my dad. Mm-hmm. Kasi I haven't been living with my parents eh. Pero, syempre, siguro, since bata pa ako, and I, I, have, I don't really have a lot of paper trails, they went looking for me at my parents' house. Mm-hmm. And you know, my dad was panicking kasi nga, ganito, ganyan, ganyan. And honestly, up until this day, I still don't know if it was if it was really that or they were just trying to harass us. But regardless, diba? So yun, parang sa akin, you know, syempre, at that moment, it was super traumatic. Yeah, diba? yeah. I remember parang one week, iyak lang ako ng iyak. Mm-hmm. Kasi ako tumitigil sa pag-iyak. Kasi, alam mo yun, parang alam ko naman, hindi ako perfect. Pero alam ko sa sarili ko, hindi ko deserve to be in that place. Kasi wala, hindi ko talaga, alam mo yun, yeah. hindi ko talaga kasalanan yun eh. Parang wala akong ginawa. Mm-hmm. Tapos, syempre, after a while, you know, people people stepped in, people helped, my name was cleared out. But, after that, I've come to realize na you know, what might be just another struggle for you? Pampaganda ng autobiography mo, should you re- decide the right one? It's literally a, a matter of death. between. Uh, it's a matter between death and life for another person. They might not even make it out alive for them to tell the story to people, to, th- to tell that story to other people. Mm-hmm. And that's a, another really big privilege check. So, you know, word gets around and Sometimes people say na parang ano daw, na parang, oh, alam mo ba na, you know, if one person gets taken out of that list, another person replaces them. And, you know, just the, th- just the thought of that and, you know, getting to know more people who are victims of the system, it's just too much for me na hindi ako magsalita. 
it's just a little too much for me to, you know, sit comfortably and just watch people suffer. And to add to that, syempre, parang, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't really super, you know, this vocal na medyo intense that sometimes people would, you know, would insinuate things and think I'm going left, which I'm not, by the way. That's not, that's not the direction I'm headed. I'm just really out here for distributive justice. Parang, you know, getting involved with these things, understanding the plight of the poor, understanding what it is to be bo- born in the bottom of a food chain. It, it was one of the biggest things that helped me fix my relationship with my mom, honestly. Because my mom was really poor. Mm-hmm. As in, you know, the, the type of poor that people mock on Facebook. My mom came from that kind of background. And of course, like when I was growing up, I hated her because, parang, diba, parang syempre, she's had her share of mistakes. Mm-hmm. Parang may mga nagawa siya sa akin na hindi talaga maganda. And parang sa akin, diba, parang sobrang simple-minded ko lang na, kung hindi mo pala kaya akong buhayin, hindi mo kaya bigyan ng magandang buhay, ba't mo pa kasi ako pinanganak? Mm-hmm. While, I, while I still carry that belief that, you know, parents should be able to take care of their kids, I also understand na sometimes you know, this system filled with injustice and a lot of bad things, it turns people into monsters. Eh? And unfortunately, sometimes, you know, these monsters, they end up as parents. And okay, sige, sabi na lang, they've had a hand in creating their life, their destiny. But sometimes talaga, <laughs> ano eh, parang you don't have enough resources eh. It's, it's it's easier said than done to say that it's your life, your choices. That only that that line for me only applies when you're in the middle class. Anything other than that, anything below that, it's a completely different story. So yun so I realized ko. Sipin mo ha. Mm-mm. My mom was really literally dirt poor. You know, she had to be a factory worker at 16. Sabi na natin na it was her choice, you know, to have a family, to have kids. But you know, imagine mo yun, parang She's had to go through that. She's experienced all these toxic things, all these really bad things. She just read on the news. Kaya siya naging ganun. Tapos ako, parang, you know, even if she didn't have the life that I have, parang, you know, I was sent to a relatively good school. Mm-hmm. I was, we were re- relatively well off, you know. I didn't have to go through any of that. I mean, if I did, it was because I chose to move out. But, diba, isipin mo yun, may choice ako na mag-move out. She didn't have that when she was 16. So, parang napaisip ako, ako nga eh, parang I've been, you know, other people who don't have the obligation to, they've been showering me with love. I have access to education. I have access to all these resources. And it's so difficult for me to get past that trauma. What more for someone like her who doesn't have any of that? Right, right. Diba? So parang, mm-hmm. yun, so parang one day I just realized it's unfair for me to be fighting for the poor and not my own mom. Tapos yun, so parang realized ko na, okay, maybe it's time to let it go. Kasi, that's the past eh. It's happened na eh. Right, diba? right. The person already there. The only, the only choices I have are to, you know, let it heal can't change the past anymore. But I can try my best to make world make the world better for her and the people who might find themselves going down the same path as her. You know? And di ko makakalimutan yun kasi, parang, well, if, they, if, if the school finds out, I'm, I'm saying it on record, um, kasi parang you were having this protest against the tuition fee increase. You know, mm-hmm. I wouldn't go into detail anymore. But yeah, it was it is what it is. We did that. And then, the, the student government of her college held a rally. It was peaceful ah, naman ah. Hindi mo kami nagsira ng mga gamit, hindi mo kami nag-spray paint ng whatever. It was a peaceful protest, you know. Right, right. Naman kami, wala mo nasaktan, ganyan. Responsible protesting lang. Oo, oh, responsible protest naman. Nothing, nothing too intense. Because, you know, syempre, parang after that, the, the photos were published online. And, you know, honestly, it was the first time that my mom reached out to me. And she said that she was proud of me. Aww. Because it was something that she dreamt about, she dreamt of doing when she was younger. But she couldn't do it because she was just a slave to the system. Yes, she wanted to fight for her rights and the rights of her co-workers. But the much bigger problem for her at the time was that they didn't have food on the table. So, you know, parang this whole activism thing, it's not about me. But it's become more personal to me. Because 
parang sa akin, I don't want more people to go through the same things I did. And I don't want more people to go through the same things that my mom did. Kasi, isipin mo, kahit magpabuti mo lang yung mabuhay ng let's say 10 people, ang laking difference na nun so, sa mabuhay. Ang laking difference think, na nun. Ang laking difference na nun. So, yun. Parang kasi, yun eh, parang yung mom ko yung epitome ng person who's had to go through social injustice, gender injustice, etc., etc., etc. So, yun. So, parang, yun. Parang, sometimes, activism makes, helps you make better sense of where you have, what you have, and where you stand in your life. Kasi, the issues really close, hit closer to home than you realize. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes, nasa harap mo lang, hindi mo napapansin na, akala mo personal problem yan, akala mo, interpersonal sa relationship nyo lang yan, pero magugulat ka na lang na, okay, parang I have to care about politics and all these things. Kasi, kapag hindi, slap ka talaga yan sa, mm. <laughs> nasa harap mo siya. So, yun. Um, well, thank you for sharing. Feel, feel ko na sobrang personal story yun. <laughs> Are you sure okay lang yan on record? <laughs> Yeah, it's fine. Talk about it. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, I've built my. Fo- I mean, I, I'm not like a big influencer, but I've built my following on that. So I don't really mind. I think more people need to hear it, and in a way, I feel like it's gonna help them come up with a survival kit of their own. You know, then this we didn't disclose, naman, you know, identities or whatever. So yeah, it's fine. Okay, okay. Just wanted to make sure. I you know we're friends first before. Podcast yeah. or interview we whatever in relationship you call this. <laughs> so um when you started doing your activism, what what are the struggles that you faced? Um challenges or merong kaba ng hater or uh, uh, balakid alanganin when you were actively doing your influence your influential advocacy. Mm. Um, you know, funny that you ask. Because mm. the, the other day, I posted oh. something and it blew up. Okay, how? As it blew up. Siya. I mean, I didn't expect for it to blow up. But I guess, number one, the biggest struggle that I face is it all comes down to I'm a, I'm a girl and mm-hmm. I'm young. Mm-hmm. Like, everything else that they throw at you, it's just, you know, icing to the cake. But it's mm-hmm. all rooted from you're young and you're a girl. So you shouldn't be acting like that. No, parang yun. Yun talaga eh. And if I were to expound on that, I think even if we're super vocal about all these women empowerment stuff and people say that we're overdoing it, it's not true. Because it's all just optics eh. Right, yung, right. yung thinking ng mga tao, they're still stuck with, you know, the whole, ah, babae ka, dapat ganito. Mm-mm. And it's a little crazy kasi if you were to look at history, di ba? Ang da- talagang deprived naman talaga ang mga babae. Eh, pero kung imaginein mo ha, ang, world, ang global, total global population, at least kalahati niyan, if not more, comprised of women. Di ba? So imagine how much faster the human race is gonna evolve if you were just to give women the same equal opportunities that you give to men. Diba? Tamang, <laughs> diba? You'll have more minds working. You'll have more people productive. You'll have more people working towards the betterment of, you know, the society. So, parang to me, you just have to suck it up. Yun, parang yun. Like, say, yun nga, two things lang eh, bata ka pa. And, babae ka. Yung sa bata ka pa, in-acknowledge ko naman yun. Na mm-hmm. I still have a lot to learn. I, I still, I, there's still a lot of things na probably magbabago pa sa akin as I go along. Pero, I also think na it's not such a bad thing. ba? Kasi, you know, if you think about it, isn't it always naman the people, the young people, who, who are crazy enough to believe in their visions of the world and who hold on to it and believe in it unquestionably that actually end changing things? Like, look at Greta Thunberg, di ba? Yep. Look at, yeah. I mean, people question her, di ba? I personally have some things I want to ask her, but we can change, parang hindi ba? The fact that I want to ask her and the fact that it makes me think, it means that she's, you know, 
steering change. Yeah. She's starting to starting a revolution. So, yun, yun. Parang yun lang talaga. Tsaka, di ba, parang, kasi mauna mo matay yung matatanda eh. So, parang yung <laughs> protected ng mga mangyayari. And kung ayaw nila lumaban, edi sige. Pero kayaan nyo na lang kami kasi kami yung magbubuhat ng mga consequences eh. I mean, hindi yeah, ko yeah, kayo yeah, yung matay ha. Pero facts only, mauna talaga kayo. So, kung ayaw nyo na lumaban, edi kami na lang. Sige, huwag nyo na lang kaming Pigilan. Pantrahem. <laughs> Choice nyo naman yun eh. Di sige. No, wala namang masasabi mga tao para magbago. Pero yun. Yun. I think young people should be really be more involved and not be scared to ask questions. Yun. Yun. Eh, what you call this? I remember when you said na yung mga matatanda. Um, I remember na nag-start yung yung pandemic, uh, kaka-uwi ko lang galing layover sa LA. And then, I had to go to the medical of the airline that I'm flying for. For my annual medical. Then, a purser, yung mga seniors na ng na cabin crew, bigla, parang out of nowhere, sinabi niya sa akin na magsasara na ang airline na pinagtatabuhan ko. And I was like, What? biglang my job, my security, everything. So, and I I remember what he said na parang na hopefully bumalik daw, not for them, kasi parang for them na senior na, matatanda na, tanggap na nila that they already had their time in the company with everything, they already had their fair share, ganyan. For us, kami, tayo na bago. Siguro, in relation to them sa what you were say- saying earlier na I guess most, even some of the old people that I talk to, they decide na to just step aside and mm-hmm. let the young people talk. Cause, well, uh, uh, as how even my parents would say, hindi na, uh, they already had their share, their time and everything. So parang, if ever, tayo na daw yung bumuo ng mundo na gusto natin ma buhay materhan <laughs> in the years to come and with the chaos going on in the world i do not want to live in a world like this yeah <laughs> i do not want, I, mahirap na nga yung pandemic and sabihin natin okay it's a pseudo natural phenomenon na somehow yes may 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 man made na influence and reason behind it but parang nagka nagpatong-patong na rin and everything. So, parang wala ka rin naman masyado masisi. Pero yung the injustice, the discrimination, the inequality as you have mentioned earlier, parang yun yung feeling ko dapat hindi na tama. It's, it's been going on for centuries. And, yeah. and yeah. Go, go, go. Yeah, no, yeah sobrang, uh, medyo na-break yung heart ko for na sinabi niyo yun sa'yo. Kasi, sobrang totoo. And, alam mo, like, because nga, lately, pinatry ko naman yung best ko eh, na, alam mo yun, sweet girl ka lang, pakit-pakit ka lang. Mm-hmm. Kasi believe it or not, three or five years ago, yun lang naman talaga yung alam ko. Gusto ko lang magpakit. Gusto ko lang, alam mo yun, selfie-selfie lang ako, ganyan. Oh, kasi mas madali mag selfie-selfie. Eh. Sige tala, mas lang, cute, yun. mas chill. Mm-hmm. Totoo naman eh. Lang, ganyan, sweet girl ka lang. Pero I also realized na, as much as I'm scared that what I'm doing, right now, which is, you know, very little compared to what other people are doing, might come with a price. I hope it doesn't, but, you know, it's the, the alam yun, parang hindi sobrang-sobrang unlikely na meron siyang, na meron siyang accompanying price. Ano pa din eh, parang, as much as I'm scared of what the price might be, I'm even more scared of what's going to happen if I don't do anything. Or if I at le- don't at least stand with the people who are doing something. Diba? Kasi, wala eh. Parang, you know, until, until this whole thing gets sorted out, until there's a vaccine, until there's a cure, there's really no such thing as an after this. Ito na yun. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have to live with this. So, you know, you either fight for that future because you're literally not waiting for anything. Ba? 
parang na-level nga yung field eh. Parang suddenly everyone can step up and be able to do something. So yun, parang, parang wala eh. Parang right now, there's not much we can help. And there's not much we can expect from the people who are more capable. So it's really up to us na mag-ambag. Patuloy nga na sa sabi nila, anong ambag mo? Mag-ambag to try and create that society that you want. Diba? Tama, yun, tama. Like, for example, yung veganism, I mean, it's such a small thing. Pero because nga, all these facts lead to, you know, to the answer na in order for us to prevent another something like this to yes. happen again, we have to stop, you know, stop stop it with the meat. Tigilan natin yung animals. Kasi yun yung way eh. Kaya nakakarating yung, alam mo yung mga virus na yan, kung tutusin, nandiyan lang dapat sila sa kagubatan or, you know, sa sa, sa kalagitnaan ng kawalan. Pero dahil nga, kinakain natin yung mga hayop, <laughs> parang, natin sila. parang alam mo yun, parang inopen natin yung doors, tapos papas- buksan mo, papasukin ako, ganun. So parang to me, kaya sa reklamo ko ng reklamo, kaya sa, I mean, magreklamo pa din ako, by the way. Nagawin ko pa rin siya. Pero you know, instead na nagreklamo lang ako, might as well do something na kahit maliit lang, alam kong may tangible effect. Mm-mm. And yun nga, that's why I decided to go vegan kasi wala eh. Parang walang point yung nagre-reklamo ako about what's happening tapos magkakontribute din naman ako. Right, right. Para sa, sa, nasa future mangyari siya ulit if hindi ko titini ko babaguhin yung lifestyle ko. So yun, I mean, I, I, I still am not super judgmental with, you know, meat eaters because I've been there. I was once like them. And this whole issue about the environment, what's so different kasi is hindi siya ano eh, hindi siya parang let's say murder or Mm-mm. some other crime na bata ka pa lang sinasabi sa iyo mali yan. Ito Uh-oh. kasi sobrang deep siyang naka-inject sa system natin. Hindi mo siya mababago basta-basta. And I know of people who are in the food industry who are, you know, distributing meat and they're just really trying to make an honest living. Hindi sila yung kaaway natin dito. Yung totoong kaaway natin dito is the system that led them there, that pushed them to choose that path. Kasi wala na silang, wala, parang wala na. Parang yun na yung next best option. So yun, that's one thing. Tapos, yun, yun. yun kailangan talaga, kailangan natin ilaban yung kind of world na gusto natin. Kasi parang tayo-tayo na lang talaga yun. Parang tayo masyadong kaasahan sa, sa ibang tao. And feeling ko, yung isa sa mga pinakamahirap na kailangan gawin is have that conscious effort na tignan mo yung sarili mo, mag-reflect ka. Kasi like, for example, uh, uh, the veganism, I mean, her, you know that hurting animals are is wrong. You know na pag masama manipa ng aso, masama kumain ng aso. Pero for some reason, natatapos yung line there. Pag baboy, baka... Uh, manok, okay lang. Tapos, or maybe, so, it takes a lot, parang ang dami mo kailangang isipin na parang ang kailangang, ang dami mong kailangang i-break down na walls na na-ingrain na sa'yo. Or, for example, with the babae ka kasi. That, that, na, that concept na, hindi mo yan dapat ginagawa kasi babae ka. Like, for example, you're not allowed you're not encouraged to do this, ah, pantrabaho ng lalaki yan, ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. Which is parang, hindi mo rin masisi in a way, kasi nga, na sobrang naka-ingrain na for time in memorial, lalaki lang talaga gumagawa nun, na girl should it be like this, girl should it be like that, but it takes a lot of conscious effort na parang, it starts at home for me. It starts at home. For you to be able to speak out, you should be able to speak to yourself and criticize yourself na parang nakakatulong ba talaga ako? O um, baka akala ko wala ako nakakontribute sa problema kasi neutral lang naman ako or or tahimik lang naman ako na kikinig lang ako. You know, it takes a lot of reflection. So, I guess for, that's what I aim to hope for and reach out by also doing this podcast is 
to encourage people to my listeners to what to everyone out there to reflect para makita din nila na every one of us also me also you even we we were we are part of the problem and parang kailangan nating solusyunan yon tayo yun nga like you said tayo tayo din naman yung matitira dito eh i don't i, I don't want to transfer to mars kung pwede pa naman salbahin yung earth why not diba <laughs> I don't want to see that in this lifetime. Hindi natin hindi na natin kontrolado what comes next eh. Pero I'm hoping na we don't have to see that in this lifetime. Yeah. Grabe. As in grabe tong taon na to. It's um it's it's scary, it's eye-opening and sobrang overwhelming yung parang lahat ng karma. I don't know. I don't know how you would call it karma. Biglang bumabalik sa atin na parang eto, dahil ginawa mo to, boom. Dahil ganito kayo mag-isip, boom. Dahil hindi nyo to, hindi kayo nakikinig sa sinasabi ng iba dati, boom. Grabe. <laughs> Sorry, napa, napaano ko. <laughs> <laughs> Pero gets kita kasi parang I would always say nga na yung, yung ano, yung COVID-19, yung pandemic, hindi niya sinira yung system. It just exposed the system for what it is. It's outdated. It is, it's exploitative. It's not just. Yeah. And it's just broken, you know, and it has to be fixed. And, you know, I mean, it sounds mean that I say it, pero honestly, if, you, if you're just starting to speak now and to want to have this conversation because, you know, you're bound to lose your job or you said, you know, I mean, realize mo na that your security as a person is threatened, your health is threatened, your family is threatened or because, you know, suddenly, biglang, boom! Ito yung babayaran mo, kailangan mo siyang bayaran. Mm-mm. If you're only speaking now, because, yun nga, it's what I, parang ngayon mo lang naranasan eh, ngayon mo lang, ngayon ko lang nakakaramdam ng effects eh. Honestly, I'm so sorry, but you deserve it. And that applies even to me. You know, I'm not exempt from, from that statement. It also applies to me. Kasi, you know, parang you don't demand, you don't demand for better things when things are okay. You know, it shouldn't have to be you who suffers bago ka pa magreklamo. Uh-uh. Kaya, yun, hopefully, after this, people would be more ready to talk about things like religion, politics, etc., 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 Yon, I just hope that ultimately we people, including myself, change. Like, whatever it is that we're learning now, we mm-hmm. carry it on to what comes next. True, true. Tama yan. Um, to expand further, it's like you're saying na it's human nature na pag hindi ka na-apekto sa sitwasyon na yun, ba't ka magpapakastress doon? Like, yeah. if, unless hindi ka kasali, bak, bakit ko intindi niyan? I have problems of my own. And I guess, doon don nagkaroon ng disconnect na we should be empathetic and compassionate towards each other kasi, again, we're, tayo-tayo lang naman din yung matitira dito, tayo-tayo lang naman din yung titira dito, yung mag-aalaga dito. So, we should all help each other out and see things always ask the bigger picture. Yes, definitely. Um, yun nga, parang, you know, when people think of politics kasi, and I'm speaking now as like an international relations student, you know, sayang naman kasi yung pinatuition ko sa sarili ko, di ba? <laughs> hindi hindi, hindi seryosohin lahat ng mga readings na pinabasa sa amin. You know, people often assume that when you say politics, you're talking about, you know, in the context of the Philippines specifically, DDS, Dilawan, Lao, ganyan. But it's not that, eh. You can be political even without siding with a DDS or Dilawan or an apologist whatsoever. It's not, it's, it's, politics is so much more than that. Strictly speaking, by definition, politics is the allocation of power who gets who, who decides where this goes, you know, and is, is the process by which power is distributed, is it fair to all? So, you know, you can you can be political without even involving matters na about 
you know, about the president or kung sino yung kalaban ng president. It's uh-huh. more than that. Like, even body positivity is political because it's rooted in a social system that is outdated and that shouldn't exist in the first place. Or, ano po ba, even veganism is political because, you know, it goes against what the capital, oppressive capitalist system is teaching you. Mga ganong bagay. Parang, you know, I, I hope people would be more willing to be political after all of this. And I hope that what, by the time this is over, we don't forget that it's important to have the difficult conversations. Like, let's not wait for the world to decide na, oh, mag-usap-usap kayo, ah, pag-usapan niyo yung mga mahihirap pag-usapan. I hope next time, hindi na, na, hindi na tayo kailangan pilitin na pag-usapan siya. How can you, anong, what are your tips to people, as you say, who are willing to be more political. But again, kasi when you want to be political, the first thing that you always consider is may magagalit sa'yo or hindi ka maintindihan ng kausap mo. How, what are the advices or the tips that you want to give out to the people who want to talk about those difficult uh, conversations? Like, it's not like for the two of us kasi technically we're we're on the same side we're saying yeah, the same thing so it's easy to talk about a difficult situation but what if you're on opposing sides how how can you get your message across and vice versa without having that much conflict na parang wag na lang kaya well number 1 ask yourself ano bang importante sa iyo what matters mm. yes yes to me what matters is human life equality na whether or not I like you as a person, whether or not you're my friend, Mm-mm. I am not in a position to decide that you don't have rights. Right. And that's important to me. Like, for example, I know people na sobrang they really get into my nerves, you know? Parang, alam mo yun, parang, hmm, parang, alam mo yun, iniisip ko pa lang sila, naiinis na ako. But, at the end of the day, I wouldn't wish for them to be killed or, you know, to be harassed. Mm-hmm. And that's important to me. Now, pag na-realize mo na ano important sa'yo, when someone else is giving you a different opinion, or kung if someone else is giving you a different opinion, tapos, hindi mo sila, hindi mo sa kanila mag-get across na yun yung important sa'yo. That's why you feel their opinion is wrong. Mm-mm. Honestly, if you're gonna ask me, pag-isipan mo yung friendship niyo. Kasi legit. Pag-isipan mo. Kasi, you think that's just politics, that's just their political leanings. But what if it's you? Mm-mm. Oh, kunyari, yung mga victims ng EJK, they're gonna say that it's okay. Kasi, ano naman eh, parang salot naman yun sa society eh. Kaya okay. ganun talaga, pag para sa progress, may mga taong matatalo. What if ikaw yung mapatay? Are they saying okay lang sa kanila yon? Diba? Do you want to be friends with someone who thinks it's okay if you die? If it's for a so-called promise of progress? Right, and if right. they say na, syempre hindi, kaibigan kita eh. Parang mas malala naman yun. Kasi may pakialam lang sila. Kasi kaibigan ka nila. Right, so, right. you know, parang wala sa pakialam kahit sirain mo yung mundo. Basta lang buhay ka. Kasi friend ka nila. And if mm-hmm. ikaw naman yung, ikaw naman yung person na apathetic and walang pakialam, Think of every single thing that you're complaining about now. Isipin mo yun. Are you complaining right, about right. thought of you having to pay Meralco XXX amount? Kahit ito lang talaga yung kinutsu mo. Ask yourself why it led to that. It led to that <laughs> kasi nandito tayo ngayon. Kung inayos ng mga tao na may power na ayusin ang mga bagay-bagay, hindi tayo aabot sa ganito. Diba? So kanino ka dapat magalit? Diba? Kaya na nasa mo yun, ano, ano kaya yung dapat mong ginawa? Ah, uh, siguro, ng eleksyon, dapat iba yung binoto mo. Or, ah, uh, siguro, bago-bago yung lahat ng to, nag, natuto kang mag-demand in your own way ng better social system. For example, naiinis ka kasi sinasabi mo yung mga mahirap, walang ibang ginawa, hindi ganito, ganyan, ganyan. Tapos naiinis ka kasi yung laki ng tax na babayaran mo. Tapos ipapang ayuda lang siya. Mm-mm. Okay, dissect natin yung problem, ha? Naiinis ka sa mahirap. Mm. Nananasa mo na ba yung wala kang makain? 
Diba? Naranasan mo na ba yun? Kasi kung hindi mo pa naranasan, uh, kasi yung parents mo, inalagaan ka mabuti. So, hindi mo siya naranasan. So, diba? Parang so, siwi mo, lahat ba ng tao, same sa parents mo? Lahat ba ng tao, same? Diba? Parang, tapos pag, sina- pag sinabi sa'yo, pag sinabi, syempre, diba? pag napaisip mo, bakit kasalanan ko ba na ano? So, the point is, you didn't choose to be there. If you didn't choose to be there, bakit naman pipiliin ng tao na maging mahirap siya? Yes, so, kung napapagod yes. ka na, 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 napapagod ka na, na magreklamo about sa mahihirap, siguro, dapat, sa susunod, yung idea mo of charity, hindi picture-picture lang. Hindi ka, hindi yung pupunta ka, mag-organize ka, magbibigay ka ng fast food, bigay kang toys, picture kayo, oh, it feels so good to help. Siguro, kailangan mong baguhin yon para hindi ka na magalit sa kanila. Intindihin mm-hmm. mo na okay, charity is not a substitute for the help that they need. But, by because of what you're doing, you're helping, you might just be helping people get on their toes and start their start their life. Namin yun, masimulan ulit yung buhay nila. Right, right. Siguro, dapat, again, hindi ka ngayon nagwawala. Nagwawala ka nung wala bang pandemic. Right. Dapat, nag nagrereklamo ka nung okay pa yung lahat and normal pa. Dapat, nung may kaibigan ka na naghihingi ng justice for the poor, sinuportahan mo siya. Kasi kung sinuportahan mo siya, higher yung chances na naayos yung sistema, bago yung lahat ng to. So, hindi ka magrereklamo ngayon, di ba? Mm-hmm. So, yun, parang whenever you're faced with a problem, syempre ibang usapan yun, kanyari, nag-away ka ng jowa mo, sa inyong dalawa lang yun, away ka ng nanay mo, sa inyong dalawa lang yun, away ka ng best friend mo. Pero yun nga, pag may nire-reklamo ka, isipin mo mabuti, paano ba umabot sa ganito? Ano ba yung ginawa ko dapat in the past na, ano, pero again, di mo na mababago yung past eh. So, siguro ngayon, ang magagawa mo, uh, siguro dapat mas mag-pay attention ako sa news. Mag-pay attention ako sa binabalita. Uh, siguro dapat, ano, sa susunod, hindi na ho, hindi na ho magsalita na ang toxic nyo, lahat kayo feeling lawyer. Siguro, kapag may time ako, basahin ko para, ah, magka-insight ako, mas maintindihan ko. Mm-mm. Moving forward, siguro dapat mas may pakialam ako in general, hindi lang sa concern ko. Kasi, kahit wala akong pakialam, what some way, somehow, makakarating sa akin yung problema. Pero, right, right. kung magiging involved ako, baka makatulong ako na ma- ma- mapigilan yung problem from right. happening. Right. So, yun. dapat mas maging proactive tayo sa mga bagay-bagay Uh-oh. kaysa yung hihintay mo nangyari sa'yo tsaka ka magre-react. Oo. Kasi, Uh-oh. walang mahihari pa ganun. <laughs> wala. Na-stress ka, tapos, wala. Sorry, pero asshole ka pa. Na-stress ka na nga, asshole ka pa. Walang nanalo. <laughs> <laughs> parang kasi yung mahihari, if reklamo ka na reklamo, kasi nangyari na sa'yo, parang kang naglagay na ng band-aid sa sugat na nandyan na kaysa yung proactive ka na Naglagay ka ng gloves para di ka masugatan. Naglagay ka ng gear para maayos ka. Oo. Parang, hindi mo naman, syempre, like, hindi ka naman kasi din, I mean, you know, unless yung nakikinig is, you know, official. Ay, galaw-galaw tayo sis, ganyan, urgent, mm-hmm. urgent to. Pero kung <laughs> natin na normal citizens lang, parang, huwag, if ayaw natin magsalita, wala talagang magagawa eh. Hindi ka talagang mapipilit eh. Tinan mo yun, bibig mo yan eh. Hindi naman kita pwedeng ganun eh. Like, pwedeng squeeze na ganun para bumukas yung bibig mo. Pero the least you can do is not try and shut up people. Because your ego and your feelings and your pride and your political leanings is not more important than the welfare of you know, of the society as a whole. Like, your feelings are valid. It's important. I hope you're safe. But at the end of the day, it's not, you're just one person. It's not more important than everybody else. So, kung ayaw mo magsalita, okay lang naman. Pero wag mong isilence yung mga tao who are, you know, who are willing to play full out. Kahit magkaiba kayo ng opinion, okay lang yun. Pero, yun. yun. On another side of that story, paano if silent ka, may gusto kang sabihin, pero silent ka kasi ayaw mong Mak- makagulo. Kasi as of now, na-realize na mga ta- na- na-realize ngayon na ang daming ganun, ang daming may saliling opinion, ang daming may gustong may gusto magsalita pero they decided not to kasi ayaw na nila ng gulo, ayaw na nila makisaw-saw. Anong, what advice can you give to those people? Mm, again, okay lang naman kung ayaw mo. 
Mm-mm. Wala talaga kasi talagang magagawa eh. If ayaw mo. Okay lang. Pero yun, kung ayaw mo, support people who are championing the same causes as you. Okay. Yun yung best thing to do. Kung ayaw mo talaga, walang magagawa. Sa, wala talagang magagawa. Kasi mga tao talagang ganun din. Talaga sila magsasalita about politics. Okay, sige. If, if yun yung gusto mo, sige, wala magagawa. Pero, yun nga, wag mong, wag mong, ano, wag mong i-project yung fear mo on another person by making them feel bad for speaking up. Right, right. Right. Diba? Kasi wala naman talagang problema eh kung hindi ka talagang magsasalita. Kasi nga, paano nga kung wala ka talagang, ano ba yun? Mm-mm. Kahit pigain ka eh. Ideally, meron. Pero may mga tao talagang wala ka na talagang magagawa. Yun na yun. Right, right. So, the, alam yun? So, by you just supporting the people who are championing the causes, okay na yun. Kasi wag mo lang isuppress yung choice ng other people to speak. Yun kasi yung pangit eh. Yung mga tao na ayaw na nga magsalita, gusto pa nila, hanap silang damay, huwag ka rin magsalita. Right, And that's, right. I think that's, that's what people mean when they say um, neutrality is bad. Mm-mm. Kasi you wanna make it seem like you're neutral. Pero yung totoo, ayaw mo lang marinig yung voice ng mga tao na may pakialam. So, right. nagiging sin siya, not because tahimik ka, but because you don't want people to you know, to fight for what they think is right. You're just, you're okay with sticking to the problem. Yun. Nice, nice. Nice words. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, Any comment on, because I have been told a lot, like for example, kasi, ako play ko sinasabi, lalo na pag voting season na, the least that you can do is vote for the person that you think can do the job properly. And, uh, ang palagi sila sabi sa akin na hindi na lang ako boboto kasi isang tao lang naman ako I don't I don't take one I would make a difference ganyan and palagi sila sabi na if 7 billion people think the way that you think wala talaga mayayari sa atin and I just hope na it will be the same for everything else na um, if you And like what I'm saying, sorry, pag wala, hindi ka bumoto, wala ka lapata magreklamo kasi you did not get your voice heard. So, ayun. Parang, I just hopefully na if ever you don't want to, like you said earlier, kung ayaw mo magsalita, ayaw mo mag-cooperate, then hayaan mo na yung mga tao na gusto magsalita at mag-cooperate. Oo. Totoo. Kasi, yun. Again, kung ganun nga yung ginawa mo, you deserve kung ano yung may nangyayari sa yun. I'm so sorry to say it, pero pinili mo yan eh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> diba? Ganun yun eh. Kapag hindi ka pumili ng action, o, oh, edi saluhin mo lahat ng mga masamang nangyayari. Kasi yun yung choice mo eh. Nag- mm-hmm. Parang kumbaga yun ang time mo lang eh. Nag- right, ka- right, right. So again, so all the more na deserve mo talaga yung nangyayari sa'yo kasi pinili mo yan eh. Mm-hmm. You had the chance to, you know, to pick a side and because you didn't, you know, you didn't, you didn't playful out, nag-stay ka in the middle, essentially just waiting for things to happen. So, kung ano yung result, eh di, serve mo talaga yan. Kasi pinili mo yan eh. Mm-hmm. Diba? Right, right. On a final note, thank you, Maddie, really. On a final note, what can you message, can you say to everyone out there who feels connected with you either by being oppressed by gender inequality, body positivity, political abuse, and everything else. What can you say to them? Ano mas- uh, what message? Mm. Ano ba? Naka gusto sabihin sa lot. Um, honestly, just, just find your why. Just look for your why. And then, once you found your why, just hold on to that. And allow the universe to surprise you. And by hold on to that, I mean fight for it, stick to it. You know, I don't want to say na oh for the betterment of the world. Because that dangerous then yung messiah complex. Eh, pag siya din yung pag-iisip mo, parang feeling mo ako yung answer sa alam niyo sa lahat ng problema sa mundo. Pero ako like I have really good intentions, pero alam ko hindi ako yung solution sa mga problema ng mundo. Pero yun just you know find your why. 
something that's much bigger than yourself, something that's not just about your ego or your personal gain. And then hold on to that, fight for it, stay true to it, whatever happens. And then, you know, you'll just be surprised where it's going to take you. So, don't be afraid. Because, you know, some people na nakikita mo na they're living the life that you want, di mo lang alam mas matalino, mas magaling, mas marunong ka pa sa kanila. But right, what right. separates you from them is that they had the courage to pursue that why. So, yun. Yun. As in, yun lang. Hanapin mo yung why mo. Ano yung reason kung bakit. Kahit anong mangyari, huwag mong kakalimutan. Tapos yun, magugulat nyo na lang kung ano na nangyayari sa buhay mo. Thank you so much. much. Thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you all so, so much for having me. Um, kindly promote yourself. Where can we see you? Where can we find your content? Go ahead. Yeah. So, yeah, again, my name is Maddie Cruz. If you want to get in touch, my inbox is always open. You can message me on Facebook. That's Maddie Cruz. You can also follow me on Instagram. That's Muddy Cruz, M-U-D-D-Y, and Cruz, like, you know, both. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you want to read my work, you can go on candymag.com or escape to the palace.com. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I'm always open for a good convo. I'm always open for people asking questions. So yeah, I mean, let's be friends. I'm I'm super excited to meet you guys. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Madagruz. Thank you very much. Thank you for having this- me. This is such a great episode. Thank you, thank you. Guys, if you're still listening right now, thank you so much for tuning in. And I will see you all again soon. This is MR and with me is Miss Maddie Cruz. You're listening to Mabuhay Maxima. Thank you very much. Okay, keep safe. Okay, stay well. Bye-bye.